yo 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 um welcome to this video in this video i'm going to talk about um flooding your calendar uh, many years ago i got told when i was into sort of i was being mentored by someone that was making around 40 million dollars um per year he was a couple of years younger than me and i went into sort of this mentor kind of relationship and the very first thing he said to me was michael let me see your calendar and i said why he said i want to see how much money you're going to make next week and I think that we need to start treating our calendars a little bit more better because your prediction of what is coming in in terms of revenue is always going to be predicated definitely on your calendar. Your calendar needs to be packed full of new client acquisition. And so in this video, I'm going to talk to you about the power of diversifying your lead pipeline. You've got to know, when you're running a video production company, what happens is, and the reason why a lot of you go into ups and downs, ups and downs, is because you don't have a systematic way of approaching people and to keep bringing in people because you're stuck in a fucking project. And we don't want you stuck in projects and not having a system that's running. Now, for those of you that um, have been trying to talk to me about getting into sort of clout, the brand story creator model, um, we are getting quite up to capacity. <clears throat> sometimes, we do need, sometimes we do need to shut it down. Um, because we only have so many producers inside and we do want to work with people more one-to-one -one and get them the results. And so if you are interested in getting in to the Brand Story Creator model, please, please hit me up on either my email, which is michael at michaelhanson.tv, or you can hit me up on IG or just leave a comment and we will find you. We will find you or you will find us. Um, but yes, um, without further ado, let's jump in. So, I put this together, it's called The Power of Diversifying Your Leads, Flood Your Calendar. In the video prediction, video production business, relying solely on word of mouth might seem like a re reliable strategy. After all, great work speaks for itself, right? I mean, this was the mindset that I was in. Like, I'm gonna put great work out, they will find me soon. I, used, I think I even had a, an old YouTuber that said something like, they will find me soon. I literally believed that people would just find me if I just kept on putting good work. Now, while that's a very good positive mindset for your delivery system and for your delivery in itself, it is probably one of the most powerful things you can think of. People will find you if you put great work out. But unfortunately, that, is going to lead to what I call the biggest roller coaster in your business, a lot of turmoil. You're going to have a lot of ups and downs. You, if you are interested in getting into the property market, you're looking to sort of build a family, you know, you're at that sort of midway point between late 20s, mid 20s, getting into wanting to build a family. It is really, really volatile to be able to say, I'm just going to build a work, build a business just on good work. So if your goal is to reach 5500K, which most of you should be aiming for, um, if not beyond that, um, or more, or even have some consistency in your re revenue, word of mouth just will not cut it. It's the worst thing you can ever do. To achieve consistent growth and sustainability, you need multiple sources of lead gen, multiple sources. Without it, you're risking inconsistency and den denying yourself the, the full potential of your business. Now don't get me wrong, it feels g good to get a referral and yes it was one of the ways that i built my business which is which was referrals um they definitely um do 50 percent of the sale for you because it comes from someone that knows someone so it's quick it feels easier and it's obviously it's a great thing to keep doing and you in itself we have a system inside for referrals inside the brand story creator model and i believe in referrals but i don't believe in in that being your only source and in fact if that is your only source you are really 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 playing russian roulette with your business and just your overall emotions and moods by not having people people coming in two or three say 50k months and then just having nothing for the next four to five months can really help really sort of stress your sort of men, mental um your mental emotions your your mentality so I'm going to run through um, by shifting gears and adopting a proactive approach to lead generation. You ensure consistent flow of projects and gain control of your business growth. And at the end of the day, guys, like I deal with a lot of creatives, like the, the most smartest people in the world, truly and utterly like emotional intelligence through the roof. But when it comes to business, it's almost like, and this is what happened to me. I spent so much time learning gear, sound, pacing, edits, software, you know, c 
color grading, the science of color, the science of story, the science of emotion, and the list goes on and on and on and on. And you need to sort of dedicate the 10,000 hours to become somewhat good. And even then, you probably hate yourself and think your work is crap and it's not up to the Vimeo staff pick that you're measuring yourself against, that you are putting in all this enormous amount of time into this creative art form with just the, with the one strategy of hoping that you put something good out that someone else will find you through that person. And that, to me, is Russian roulette. It is not business. And at the end of the day, you've got to really make a decision. You know, are you a hobbyist or do you want to build a business? And then when you ask yourself, what type of business do you want to build? Do you want a lifestyle business or do you want an enterprise? And there is a difference between the two. The enterprise is going to cost, is going to cost you a huge amount of time and energy. The lifestyle isn't going to give you the, the, the money that you truly want. It may just give you the lifestyle that you want. But either right, you, either either, you need to make that decision where you're at and really sort of draw a line in the sand and just commit to this part of business and no matter whether you brush past this video whether you are, th are up at night worrying about it at some point you are going to have to address this because this is when things get serious this is when you need that consistency especially if you're wanting to buy property especially if you're needing loans from banks this is what's going to give it to you so please pay attention to this embracing a strategy that empowers you to reach new heights in your video pr production career just before I get into it, I want to give you some proof that, that these systems work and that this sort of way of approaching business does have a promising effect. So um, I had two people reach out to me um, for brand stories and our Reels content has been, this is organic. Um, and the list, like I'll, you can go through many of these sort of, you know, results, book my first discovery call from DM strategy, that's an outreach um, strategy. And then there's obviously different ways you can do this. And this is what I'm going to go through with you today in detail of like how you can start to get this consistency and get these kind of results where, you know, you're starting to close 45 to 80K. You just, this kind of, this kind of systematic way of looking at it is going to make you feel more settled. And I truly believe will help you deliver a better product. So from lead gen, so, so from lead droughts to thriving video production. My journey, let's talk about how it happened with me. So my journey in vis visual storytelling began 15, 15 years ago, sparked my desire to connect with my son. As some of you know, this is how it all began with me. Um, filled with passion, fresh out of a job with Yellow Pages. So I worked for Yellow Pages. So I was dealing with a lot of local business. And I think that that's one of the reasons why I have a bit of a leg up on most people is because I know how much they were spending on just full page ads. And I'm talking about solo plumbers spending 50 grand on a full page ad plus digital products because that was muscling in as well. I was ready to conquer the world. So I was working for Yellow Page and I came fresh out of that and then I was ready to conquer the world. And after seeing a gap in the emerging world of digital marketing, little did I know, little did I, know I was about to get a heavy dose of reality. Unlike Yellow Pages, I had to find my own leads. Like Yellow Pages had obviously been around for decades, like just... You know, it's part of our history, Yellow Pages. For those in America and England and Australia, they know how big Yellow Pages was. It was it's an actual massive thing. Um, and they would just be able to provide leads for us. But I didn't know when I walked into my own business that I had to do all that by myself. I thought it just somehow would work. Now I could now I could sell, but figuring out like uh, figure, figuring like most of the good work would have the clients flooding in. That was the part that I was really confused about because i knew i could sell i had, had a i had a lot of experience around media and why video should work because we were selling video even in yellow pages we were selling video you know i was selling full page ads i understood the power of advertising and awareness and conversion mechanisms and everything else in but i had that sort of tuned in i could sell it wasn't that but it was this like oh shit now i've got to find a predictable way of finding people so this unpredictably forced me to take uh, to take on less than ideal clients just to pay the bills leaving me frustrated and creatively unfilled i remember like once i started i was taking anything and everything on because you get into that mode where you get into this business when you see you want to express yourself you want to tell stories you want to do docos you want to do content that's going to inspire and change and, and create an impact in a brand but not everyone can pay that fee and 
if you keep taking, if you, if you literally are looking for the dream client all the time and you don't have a systematic way of getting to them, then you've got to keep eating. You've got to eat and rent needs to be paid. And at the time I was like, I'd bought a house and so I'd had to pay my mortgage and everything in between. It was one of the most stressful times of my life. So I just, so I developed a, a strategic um, system focused on cinematic brand stories that showcased the value of my work that could deliver. This approach allowed me to consistently attract high quality clients who valued my experience, stabilizing revenue and allowed me to thrive at the top tier video production specialist, mastering lead gen, transform my life. Now, what I'm trying to say in this, so to give this around sort of feeling is that I first got out of Yellow Pages and I had this amazing confidence around selling. The biggest problem that I had is I just could not find leads and I had to spend. I knew that that was something that I needed to fix immediately because if I didn't fix it, I was going to be forever just taking on this shitty work. And even the shitty work, I didn't really feel that great about. And and they were paying and they were demanding and they were needy. And then you, if you're watching this and you've ever taken on anyone that's barely got budget, they're the most neediest, hard work, hardworking sort of clients. But the ones that pay 50K, it's like, you know, are we in? Are you in? Yep, just transferred you the money. It's like, boom, like it just happens. Everything's fast, you know. And then next next week, it's like we do pre-production. They've got the time. They know they're investing in it. They're a better client when you get them bigger clients. But I didn't know how to find them. And so I had to spend hours upon hours upon hours, not only of, you know, time, but actually invest in, in finding people that knew how to do it. I had to pay them. I had to be mentored. And it took me a long time to get to the point where I'm at. So this presentation is for you if you are frustrated with the inconsistency in your project leads. Um, you've been relying on just one or two sources of video production work. That's also a problem. If you're working with an ad agency, if they cut you off, your whole supply is gone. You, you won't have any work. And it's, again, it's really high risk. It's like taking on a massive retainer for, say, 50K, which I've done before, which is 50K a month. And then what happens is if they just stop, you've built this whole lifestyle around yourself and then, boom, they stop. You need to diversify. You need to have different ways of doing this. You're feeling desperate to take on any job that comes your way, so this training's for you. You've tried, um, you've tried um, feast and farming cycle in your production pipe. So if you're up and down, you struggle with unpredictable revenue and financial stress, and that in itself can be very, very alarming. You're consistent. You're you're constantly worried about how to keep your business afloat. That's the other one. And then you want to stop chasing lower end clients, and this was the big reason I did it. I just could not. I didn't, it wasn't the fact, it wasn't just the money that low-end clients were bringing, it was their desperation and their neediness and their absolute had to get it perfect because if it didn't work, they were struggling and their stress was coming onto me and they will dump on you um, and you want to start, so basically what I'm saying here is that you don't want these sort of lower-end leads and you want to start flowing, flooding your calendar with high-quality prospects. Now, the goal is to show you how to build a reliable and predictable lead chain system so that you can systemize your workforce and workflow and focus on the video production produ projects that you truly are passionate about. Okay. So, why deliver, why diverse lead um, sources are so important? Well, in the world of video production, r relying on a single lead source is a risky game. It's just risky business. Studies show that video production companies that use only one channel for lead experience, lead experience, experience a 40% higher risk of project droughts compared to those that have multiple sources. So it's just an odd scam. It's been having multiple streams of sort of pipelines is just going to give you a better chance to find the better avatar client. And let me tell you another thing that happens when you do this you literally can raise your prices overnight. Like you don't ha can you imagine if you would say taking on a client and they said, I got 50, 50 K then another client comes on and says, I got 60 K and then another client comes along and says, I got 40 K and then another client says, comes along and says, I got six figures for this project. Like, like, and then you go into a new business meeting and you're just about to meet a client f for the first time. And they say they've got two K budget. What are you going to say to them? They're going to say, no, I don't start my work for anything less than 30000 You've got like a diverse pipeline now. You've got a grand architecture of leads everywhere. You've got 
a, a whole wad of different opportunities. You know, it goes back to like dating. Like women have always been really good at they they very quickly can go out into the market and you know, I always say like men a little bit like a little bit like uh, dogs. You know, women have and you'll never beat a woman when it comes to their level of options. Okay, and so you need to become that attractive in your business, that diverse in your business that you have so many options that if a client pisses you off, you fire them or you say no to them. You know, I, Danielle, one of our sort of um, our producers, just wrote in the Facebook community that the power of no is one of the most self-loving things you can do. Like just saying no to people, that like, I will not do it for that price. But you can't do that when you've got your mortgage and you've got the bills and you've got everything else in, 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 in between. And so you are really putting yourself into a risky section. So um, the, lead, the, lead, the lead gen struggle is basically no clear avatar, um, reliant on word of mouth, no time, which is a big one, um, no structure to guide the conversations, which is big, fear of rejection and lack of systems. This is really, I spoke to a guy last week and he basically said one of my biggest pain points is I just, I am super creative, but I do not understand how systems work. It just activates a part of my brain that I just can't wake up. I just don't get it. I don't know how these Zapiers talk to this or that system works with this. And then when I get it, I need the buy-in to be able to do it. But that system was the thing that is going to be the vehicle to produce you more opportunities, to be able to house the volume of work. Like if you've got a lot of you watching this, if I said to you, I'd give you 10 brand stories at 100K each, but it had to be done in six weeks, you wouldn't even be able to facilitate that work. It would actually make you go broke, broke, broke. Because you don't have a system mindset or because you're not looking at systems in a way that can really help you scale your business up. And that's the key. So here are the five resources um, or the five sources of lead. The very first sort of pipeline is referral partners, okay? The second one is organic awareness. I'm going to go through each one of them. Then there's paid traffic. Then there's client introductions. And then there is called outreach. And let's go through them. Okay. So referrals. Referral partners. Partners with business or influence to gain referrals. A video production agency might collaborate with a marketing consultant or a PR firm to get referrals. For example, a video production company might partner with a digital marketing agency to offer bundle services such as video production with SEO optimization, creating multiple, multiply, multiply beneficial lead generation strategies. Ideal clients, no, ideal clients, no other ideal clients. Now, what I'm trying to say here is that you want to find someone that is completely and utterly influential. Now, I always had like five key partners. I had one sort of high-end website company that would charge around six figures back in the day for their website. And I knew for a fact they needed video and they needed my type of videos because my videos would humanize them, particularly things like software. You know, they need animation. They need humanizing. They need to explain complex um, solutions. They need to explain that and video is a very powerful tool to, to be able to clarify and obviously dis differentiate. So partnering with people like marketing agencies, pe par par partnering with people like even business coaches, like actual business coaches. Let's say you niched into the building industry and you, you work with a coach that is working with all the top 20% building coaches. Then you go and partner with him. You do a webinar together and he becomes a referral partner. You've got to structure that properly. And if you're interested in that, we can show you how to do that inside the Brand Story Creator model. But it's as simple as being able to approach people that has large volumes of the people or the avatar that you want. Let's say that you're approaching agencies. Agencies can be a good referral. I only do five, really, because like, you only need five. Five solid, ref and make sure they're the best. Like, they know a lot of people. They know they've got influence. They've got power. They've got per persuasion. So if I was to go to an if I, like let's say I was niched into builders again, and I went over to an agency, I'd be like, look, um, if you deal with any architects, property developers, building companies, just let them know that I'm your specialist. I want to be your referral partner. And then I would start to take them out. I would have coffee with them. I get to know them. What's their pain points? What's their problems when they're dealing with external sort of videographers or freelancers or directors or want someone to come in as a specialist? 
we can do this for you. This is what's going to help you. This is going to help your client repeat. You want to help your referral partner, A, look good, build their status, two, help them make more money, or three, you know, give them their time back. These are really, really important things that the referral partner will be looking for, but there needs to be some kind of benefic- benefit to them, whether it's monetary, whether it's making them look good, whether you do some stuff for them, but you're you're developing five key referral partners. That's how I would do it. I did it with an agency. I did it with a lot of influencers. I did it with a lot of business coaches. I did it with PR companies. And I just had five. That was it. I just stuck it at five and then I went on to the next part. So organic awareness. Organic awareness is things like, you know, let me read it to you. So create a uh, distribute engaging content such as blog posts, behind the scenes videos and client case studies. Client case studies are key here. This is not only is it interesting to other businesses, particularly if they're struggling, but it actually shows an immense amount of proof and evidence that you are in the game and you are working. So in terms of content, this is probably something I want to highlight. This builds your authority and passively attracts potential clients interested in your expertise. And I learned from another coach that I was recently listening to is basically silent buyers, high-end buyers are typically silent. They will not tell you that they're going to buy from you. They're typically silent. But it doesn't always have to be online. Engaging in offline activities like attending industry events, this is obviously organic awareness, networking at a business meeting or pitching projects or conference such as TEDx and talking from stage. Now, talking from stage, let me talk about this. I have t- done a couple of these events where I've talked from stage or even webinars, like where I've gone in as a guest, and this is one of the best bits of advice that I can give you. Contact a business coach or someone that's influenced you online and say to them, like, I know you're working with my demographic. Let me show you how video production can help serve builders. Let's say build a coach. I would ring the builder coach. I'd be like, yo, man, how you doing? I specialize in video production. I've got this presentation on how builders can convert more create more awareness and raise their perceived value through the power of visual storytelling. I would love to put this on for your for your guys. I think it'd be really educational. You can keep it within your sort of, I don't know, academy or whatever. I'll put it on for free. All I'm asking for is that you could send me a couple of clients if they do ask for my name. Like that in itself will create an immense amount of work. Now speaking on stage is even freaking very powerful. Now, most people won't do it. Most video guys won't do it. Again, you're so focused on the technical creative that you won't even think about going on stage and talking about what your work actually does for businesses. Well, let me tell you something. If you did that, you would make tens of thousands of dollars. Tens of thousands of dollars. Speaking on stage gives you instant credibility, instant authority, and instant trust. And these are all the the ingredients for sales. This is all the ingredients for creating emotional connections with clients. Organic awareness, this is, has to be said. Now, obviously, there's other ways to organically do it, but content is very much, and it's really difficult with content because like with content, it's so invisible. There's days you post content, you get no likes, no engagement, no nothing, but let me tell you something. Clients, if you are making that content structured for a specific avatar they are watching, not everyone wants to let you know they're watching. Typically, the ones that are letting you know they're watching, they're never going to buy from you. It's the ones that don't let you know. So it's really hard and to, to sort of convince you to put content out as a storyteller, but I'm telling you, once you start doing that, not only will you feel good, you'll start to get a bit more celebrity status, meaning when you walk into a room, people will know your name before you know their name. And it really is about getting yourself out there and awareness. Now, if you haven't got an email list pumping out an email, I'm going to do this in a future video. This is definitely something you need to do to help assist with your organic awareness. Okay, so this is a very powerful, um, you know, way to get your pipeline full. Um, you know, once a month with this networking, once a month speaking or engaging somewhere, you know, once a month, you know, writing, you know. Um, Uh, a a press conference and then every day put some content out every single day and you want to create an omnipresence omnipresence is like have just one piece of content one email can be turned into a reel by just speaking over it uh then it can be posted on x then it can be posted on um twitter linkedin you want to post it on community fits youtube and for those of you who haven't got a youtube i'm going to talk to you about the power of youtube and how youtube is just absolutely the next thing that you should be looking at doing because think about it 
Instagram is typically for guys is money, bitches, and cars. <laughs> Sorry. It typically we're looking at shit that's distracting us, and then we'll passively see advertisements as we go. Women are looking at, at travel. They're looking at romantic quotes. They're looking at things of self-love, things of that nature, fitness, things of that nature. And then they're passively looking. But when we go to YouTube, right, we're either looking for two things. We're either looking for entertainment or we're looking for information. Right now, if you can imagine you're working with a builder and you're putting out content on YouTube, where do you think the marketing manager is going to go to truly find the latest trend in video on how they can position themselves? YouTube. So if you can be super dialed in on YouTube as an organic awareness as content, this is the number one place. Yes, it's going to take you some time to get some followers. Yes, it's going to take you some time to get some notoriety. But just building it today is like your future self is going to thank you for it. Okay, so that is something because YouTube compounds like Instagram and Facebook and all these other pl platforms, they just, they're disposable media. They disappear after 12 to 24 hours. YouTube doesn't. It's a search engine. It compounds. So it will be working for you in the background. And so you want to keep putting out um, content and creating that awareness and then having a systematic way of doing it, again, let your calendar guide you in terms of how many times you should be doing it per month. But content itself, like particularly reels on Instagram and LinkedIn, and having notoriety on there and building awareness and getting the attention of people, that should be a daily practice and that should be inbuilt into your calendar, 90 minutes a day, creating cool pieces of content from your perspective, your viewpoint. This is an amazing way to build lead gen. And it also cooks your your people that are waiting, like clients that you've had a first call with and then they're going away and doing research with you. Let's say it takes to say, oh, we'll have a meeting next week. And you post something every single day and they're seeing that, plus you're sending emails out, they're starting to develop a relationship with you and you're not even in the room. This is the power of organic awareness. Do not skip over this section. <laughs> this is it. This is, the, the, this is a powerful thing to do for leveraging your... Um, video business, um, your freelance business, um, you as a creative director, this is, this is definitely um, a powerful thing to do. Just breaking down your thought process around storytelling. Powerful. Paid traffic. <clears throat> this one. I mean, last month I spent around 9000 And like, sometimes I like it, sometimes I don't. But you need to have a media buyer. Um, I'm not going to go into a big thing but running targeting ads on like platforms like google and facebook is a game chamber changer for your bi bi video business it's instantaneous it will speed up the process like nothing before you don't have to you know spend a lot of time talking people again like yellow pages i mean when you think about it i remember when yellow pages was so big they they turned away to google and said no we're not we're not we're not we're too big for you go away and then yellow pages came back and uh then, then they had to come back to, to Google and say, okay, well, well, we'll work for you. And so now Yellow Page is working for them. And so in a lot of ways, people would, what I call active advertising, which is when you're looking for something, hence YouTube, when you're looking for something, it's like phone book, Google, well, now it's Google is what I'm trying to say. Passive is billboards, television, but now it's Instagram. It's like you're just passing through and then you see an advertisement. So active is always very powerful. So paid traffic is... Is, a, is like you get the right advertisement correct, um, you can literally get a client within the next 12 hours like that. I'm talking meeting done, signed, sealed, delivered, done. Paid traffic has a lot of magic to it. But again, you are paying for it and you've got to get it right so you'd want to work with a media buyer on that so you can get this set up properly. That's really important. Client introductions is also another powerful way. So referrals and client introductions should never be dependent on. Now, we talk about that as your number one thing. Now, we have a th system around that, and this is somewhat, this is a little part of it. I'm not going to give everything away here. But the three key moments for me is the end of production, wrapping up the production, and then the delivery of the final video. This is the time when you ask for more work. This is when you ask for three or four people to come and work. It's always when you've finished a part of the production, but the end part, when you've given them a solid piece, it's like, I want us to talk to you about our next idea. That's the first thing you do. And also, just while I'm talking to you, 
do you know three or four people that could potentially benefit from this as well? Because their emotions are so high, particularly if you've humanized them and you've done a brand story, you've done something quite impactful and they've invested quite heavy because my rule is people want what they can't have, people chase what moves away from them, people pay, people appreciate what they pay for. So the higher the number that you've sold it to, the deeper of appreciation they will have providing it's good and it's working for them and you're giving them what they should, which you should be doing. We're not teaching you here at sort of cloud to, to sell shit to clients. You've got to put the work in for your creative. You've, this, this is more for the person that knows how to tell a story, that literally knows how to light and interview someone and, t- and do some form of journalism and does some form of storytelling that knows how to place assets in, in the right key moments of a person's brand that I'm giving this advice to. You have to be able to deliver. But the most best the best time that i have ever asked for referrals or more work or the next idea or this concept i've got for you or this long-term story partnership which you should be going to after a very big project you should offer them let's work together for 12 months let's work together for 18 months it's either 6 12 or 18 months and then you want to structure that into a month to month sort of either content or something that's going to create value for that particular client but the best time to ask them is when you've delivered that really high, high emotion, emotional piece and they're super happy with you. That's the moment you need to ask. You do not relax around that time and go scooting off, running around looking for someone else. You work with them and this, is, this becomes the, the, one of the pipelines and one of the strategies that we, we talk about. Cold outreach. Now, cold outreach, I've done a full video on this. This is um, probably the most predictable way. The thing that I love about cold outreach, directly contact um, potential clients through emails, calls and DM strategies. So what we get you to do a lot of the time in, in cloud is we, we get to, we, we basically build the perfect dream client. We know that we want to get X amount per client. And then we, we will, we, we go after them. We really go after them, but we do it in a very, very cool, structured, scalable way. So my team util, utilize platforms like um, LinkedIn and Instagram from direct outreach to potential clients. We don't just send cold messages. We actively engage with them with their content by liking and commenting. So we don't just say, hey, you know when you get them emails and it's like, hey, uh, I had one this, I had one today, the other day. I can't remember. My guys, I'm too scared to click on my other page because I don't know what I've got on there. I might have something sensitive on there, sensitive information. Um, <clears throat> but basically one of my setters, and I'll talk about setters in a second, but one of my um, appointment setters basically sent me a screenshot and said, this guy said this. And it was like, my team have, have, have assessed you and we are pre- ready to present our proposal to you. It's like, motherfucker, I ain't signing off. I'm not seeing you. I don't fucking give a fuck whether you can assess all you want to assess. I'm not fucking accessible right now. Or a- a- accessible. <laughs> and so... <clears throat> the cool thing was that um, my setter recognized that that was not the cool way of doing it. It's not the way to do it. Like outreach has to be humanized. That's the it's 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 a hustle and humanize. It's the two. It's hitch and hitch. So hustle and humanize. You have to humanize yourself, and a lot of that is just liking, engaging, and being active on their stories and knowing what to comment on their post, but always leaving a question. This is the secret. I'm giving it to you straight now. Like, this is it. Like, go and give someone, your ideal client, a compliment and then ask them a question. They'll answer that question. Then underneath that, you just say, I just shot your DM. That's it. And then you take them through a script and say, hey, do you want to book in for a Zoom? But you're not just selling to them. You're asking questions to them. And that's what we use. We use this, stru- this structure, which is called film and story, which is we farm, we... There's a lot of it to it. This stands for something. Film and story is a method that is an I. F stands for F stands for farming your leads. S stands for I stands for um, uh, I love. Then L is leave a message. Then M is um, you basically you message back and you basically get what you're doing is you're bringing them into the DMs. Once you've got them into the DMs, then you're taking them through the story method, which is you're finding out their struggles. You're finding out what do they desire. Then T represents thirst. S is struggle. O is either the owner of the business. R is what kind of revenue do they want to achieve, and are they on? You know, are they making money? And then Y is for yearning. Is this a now thing or a later thing? So we're asking these questions under this methodology, and then we build out this process for it. Now, the good thing about it, I was going to talk about setters, is, and I never knew what a setter was for many, many years. There's people out there that you can hire that will work this system for you on behalf of you under your 
name or under your company, they will act as you and they will follow a script and they will go out, compliment question, compliment question, compliment question. They're drumming up all this business. It all goes into the DMs. They're asking the story method questions. They're booking into the calendar. And then when you wake up, you're literally getting like appointments. Now, this is powerful because... For instance, I've got three setters on. So people must think I'm on cocaine because I look like I don't sleep. So for every sort of hour of the day, someone is in my DMs answering my messages, booking in calls, getting a sword. Now, I'm in there too, so it's not just them. I'm in there as well. When I'm awake, I'm, I'm with them. But when I'm asleep from, say, like, I don't know, some, so say from sort of 9 to 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock in the morning, I'm out. I'm asleep. But there's a setter in there booking up. So I'm waking up to appointments. All right, people that are interested and we have a high qualification because we're invite only, we're only looking for people that we think we can actually serve and help. Again, if you're watching this, go find Instagram and book yourself in for a walkthrough session on how we can help you with your brand story creator. But this method is a very powerful, powerful method. So um, I'll, I'll tell you what it is. So it's farm, which is for the high-end leads. Then you basically do I love. So you're basically finding something that you love about them. And then it's about leaving a message but you don't just say i love something you say like if it's a builder for instance you'd say i love the boot this build how long did it take you to put together that's them they have to engage when you put that on comment like if you put that publicly and you just how long did that take you to get take you to to do and then let's say that you're talking to them on linkedin and they were like who the fuck is this and then they jump on your page and they can see I'm a video production agency that specializes in building builders and helping them with conversions and helping them um, create emotional connections with builders or something like that. A visual storyteller for, for builders to help them create an emotional connection and sell more property. Something like that, right? You, you would, you would, we, we actually help you write that and get that dialed in with one of our producers. But that's how it starts to work. And then they go on your page and then they start to see that you've got organic content. And they're like, okay, this guy's a thought leader. <clears throat> so I'm going to answer the person. Then the person, then you go back to them and then say, I just shot you a DM. And then your first question to them could be something like, hey, man, I was just checking out your website. How long have you guys been in business for? Great. I just noticed that you didn't have any, you didn't have any videos. I'm just noticing, oh, you do have some videos, and I've got some comments around this particular video. Have you thought about doing this, this, and this, and this? No, I haven't thought about it. Um, do you have plans for the next six months to create better content and to do a brand story? Have you ever thought about doing a brand story for your company? It'll help differentiate you and help you with your conversions, question mark. And it's like, no, I never thought about that. And then it's like, okay. Then you, get, you go through the more questions to develop that relationship to a point where it feels humanized, not seller, and say, hey, would you like to catch up on a Zoom call? And next thing you know, you're on a Zoom call. Now, imagine if you had three setters, 24 hours a day, doing that all day, every day. You know, <clears throat> you'd end up somewhat with a calendar that looks similar to mine. Like you would have a calendar that was fairly, fairly sort of dialed in is what I'm saying. So then you leave a comment reach out publicly on social media that has a car offer, message direct. This can be done via DMs or including uh, in including more about the I love. So you can talk more about that. But you, the ideology is get them into a private setting, whether that's, I don't know, email, if that's on DMs. You want to try to start that conversation so that you can book them in. Because the number one goal of like this is just lead gen. It's just your calendar. It goes to the very start of my message, <clears throat> which is flood your calendar the power of diverse leads. We, that's the name of the game of lead gen. It's not sales. That's a whole separate video, and I'm going to do a whole other more content around that. We're going to talk about that later, so just make sure you subscribe to the channel and get ready for that because that is coming. But this is about just getting you Zoom meetings or in-person meetings. This is just about filling the calendar up. Is getting the calendar to a point where you feel that you have somewhat control over this. And you want to systemize this to the best of your ability. Absolutely. Now, story, as I said, is struggle. These are the questions. So this is making sure that you ask the questions like what are their pain points? Why are they there? And to me, if you haven't sort story certified them, then you haven't qualified them. They need to have some kind of deep, rigid pain, deep, 
dark pain inside of rage and confusion around content. If they don't have that, they've got no struggle. There's nothing to sell. The thirst is the desire. They have to have a burning desire for what they really want for their business. Maybe they want to raise the status. They want to raise the perceived value. They want more of an emotional connection. They may want to just retain clients because compounding is the name of the game when it comes to business. Compounding the business by just retaining what they have. And that could be a desire. They do that through storytelling by making their current clients feel good about being a customer. And then you want to make sure that you're speaking to the owner because there's no point doing the meeting if you're not speaking to the owner or at least a decision maker. Then you need to know they've got revenue and you have to be creative around that. For those of you who want to know how to ask that question, come into the Blind Story Creator model or talk to us. And then the yearning is all about like, do what do they want? What is it that they actually – sorry, sorry, not what do they want. I've got it wrong. Yearning – is about is this a now thing or a two years down the track? Because there's no point meeting someone like today or tomorrow. If they want this in two months, talk to them in two months. Don't waste your time. Go back to the people that want it now. So yearning. So struggle, thirst, honor, revenue, and yearning. Remember that because then you have a, what I call a hot. Think about anyone that ever sold. This is how much I'll test you. Did they have a struggle? I guarantee you they did. You just didn't ask them. If you didn't ask them, you didn't ask them. You should have asked them because they didn't have thirst. Did they have a desire? What was the desire? More conversion, more, more revenue, more freedom, more time. Like what was it? Then was you speaking to the owner? Did, were they making money? They have to if they were paid you already. And then was it a now thing or a later thing? Like guarantee like your own, any of your sales would have been qualified under this. So just stick to the story method. What's the struggle? The struggle will make people, when you understand someone's struggle, then you understand how to help them. And that's the main thing. I'm going to talk about that in a future video around sales. Um, the hook, uh, two hook email, this is a really powerful method. It's one of my favorites. This one really works. So just listen up to this. Basically, I had a system in mind, which was 10 before 10 a.m. 10 emails goes out before 10 a.m. And I trained one of my producers to do it for me. Just 10 emails, 10 a.m. So the purpose to use cold outreach as a consistent lead chain strategy, compl um, complementing other methods and engaging prospects who may be interested in your services. The goal, get the email open, read, and, and get a response. That's the only thing we really want to do. So the hook, the, take, take the thing that you saw on their site. So you go on their social media, you go on their social websites, so you go somewhere digitally where you can see their stuff. Um, that that we liked and built into a powerful one sentence hook. Sure, we aren't we are not spam, and that this is written personal. So you need to humanize. I'm going to give you the formula. Okay, why me? This gives context about who we are, and why they should be listening to us. Conflict. Sure, sure, where they could be improving, and this is the thing. You want to be acting like a high end director. If you want to be paired like a high end director or a high end videographer, then act like one. Be the expert. Give them the conflict of where they could have improved in terms of their current content. These are the best clients to critique. So you want to show them where they could be improving or where they're having a shortfall and how you found it. Maybe there's a bug on their website. Something. Find something that's helpful, something that is unique to them so they know for a fact that you have actually looked, that you're not spamming. Again, it's hustle and humanize. These are the thing. You Without the humanizing too much hustle, and this is the biggest problem why none of this cold outreach ever works, is because people don't have intention behind the intention of sending an email. You need to have that tone in there that feels human but anyone can smell when you're faking it have the intention of trying to really critique them find something that's wrong about their website find something that's wrong about how they could be doing something better and offer up value by giving them an insight to how you feel about it and that should really help um the client um, respond, not only respond, but build an insane amount of trust. And then when they look at your website, again, builder looks at your website and you, your website says you specialize in builders. And then they look at all your social media and specialize in builder. And then you're putting content on top of that. Now you look like a fucking Gary V of the building industry. This is what I mean. It all kind of works hand in hand. And then you want to have sort of show them how you can help them and the solution. And then you want the call to action. Explain what the next step is by coming into. So you screenshot this and start figuring out how to set outreach. Um, <clears throat> all right. So for those of you that um, are watching, if you've not subscribed, subscribe because I'm going to be putting out more content. For those of you who are doing around 10K a month, want to scale up to 50K um, and you want to start really ramping the business up say you're doing between say six and seven or eight care 
Um, we are looking for more. We're looking for particularly 10 niches this month. Um, we are sort of struggling with um, – we do have to cap it um, with us. That's not scare tactic. That's actually real because – we're so heavily involved with our students um, that we've only got so much placement, so much availability and seats that we can actually help. So um, we had an instance a couple of months ago where we, we couldn't let three or four people come in um, and it does happen. So if you are interested and you want to give us an indication of interest, just hit me up on Instagram. It's I am Michael Hansen or you can leave a comment. Make sure you subscribe though because the stuff that I'm giving you should give you somewhat of direction around lead gen sales, you know, offer creation, <clears throat> brand positioning I'm going to talk about very soon. I'm also going to talk a lot about on this channel a little bit more around psychology of selling and the psychology of film and I really want to talk more about brand stories and, and things of that nature and the creation process. Um, so make sure you subscribe um, and uh, thanks for tuning in.